Hi, I'm Hannah Jenny Weisberg of JewishMom.com. I have been waiting for almost two years to share this story, one of the most incredible experiences of my life. You are about to hear the story of two Jewish mothers who were strangers yet shared the same dream. In accordance with the advice of the Talmud, these two mothers prayed for one another, and this past year, both of them experienced a miracle. Every person longs for something. Every person, like the mothers in this video, has a dream. Yet there are also many among us who not only dream, they long for an end to their suffering. Women waiting for a husband, wives waiting to have their first child, sick people desperately in need of healing. I pray that the story of the miracle of these mothers in this video will give hope to all in this season of miracles. Happy Hanukkah. So thank God I have four amazing, wonderful, active, energetic, fabulous boys. Um, and I really um, want, wanted and prayed for a girl. Um, and I called Hannah Jenny to find out what the secret is. For having girls since she's uh, definitely the, a, a girl expert um, and then I think it was a few days later even um, she called me and said I have a match for you I think that she knows a woman and she didn't tell me who um, who has four daughters so the story is that Hannah Jenny came to me one day when we were bringing our children back from the preschool and she said listen I have a friend she has four boys. I have very unusual things to say. Sometimes they even said, I'm sorry, after they found out that I had a boy. And I know you have four girls, so, and you don't have any boys yet, so I thought maybe you could, like, say a prayer for each other. And I thought that was a wonderful um, idea. I thought that was really um, different. <laughs> and uh, this is what's called a skula, like a, a good omen that each one of you would have the opposite sex. I was really excited about the idea, but I was also really nervous because I was very concerned that um, that she would succeed and I would have a girl and that I wouldn't succeed with my, my prayers. Did I think it would work? That's a good question. I didn't know. It was very easy to dub in for Haya. It was very easy because I, uh, I wanted it for her a lot. So I proceeded to, doubt, to pray a bit for her but I wasn't sure about myself um, because I was already 41, I'd had four kids, I was really, really exhausted, my, I just had no energy. And I had discussed it with my husband that I, I didn't know if I would want to even have any more children. And then a few months later, I, uh, I found out that I, had, I was pregnant with a girl. And so I couldn't lead Jenny on, lead Hannah Jenny on. Um, so I wanted to be honest with her and say, I, and I remember the conversation walking down the stairs to get our children from the preschool, that um, I really wasn't sure where I stood, and that anyway my body was having signs that I was maybe not going to have any more kids. Um, I know that when I've always loved sitting beside my mother in Bacon Esset, in, in synagogue, and I always thought, well, my boys are older, I'm not going to have anyone who will sit beside me in, in synagogue. Um, and I just thought it was done. So I could still pray for another baby, but I didn't really want one necessarily. But my boys are wonderful, and so it wasn't because I felt a lack in that way. I just knew that I really wanted a girl. So I was honest with Hannah Jenny about that, and that I was really happy to pray for this other woman. She was already pregnant. We could still pray that it would be a girl. And, uh, and the prayers would not go wasted. And if she wants to pray for me, then that's fine, but Hannah Jenny could pass on that I wasn't necessarily in the same place. Actually, when I first, real, first knew that I was pregnant, I didn't know it was a girl, obviously, and I, I really didn't care. I stopped caring completely. As soon as I found out I was pregnant, I immediately stopped caring, and I was actually, like, completely, I was 100% happy if it was going to be a boy. So then it, it uh, 
Hanuta and he had a bat mitzvah for one of her girls. And I was about to leave, and she ran after me and said, wait, wait, there's somebody that I want you to meet. So I thought, who could this be? Oh, it must be this other woman. So it was, and she was five months pregnant at the time, and we chatted, and um, we chatted for a long time. <laughs> it was very special. Actually, I think we both got tears in our eyes. We, uh, we gave each other a big, big hug, and it was very interesting because we obviously totally didn't know each other, and we were introduced as, this is the person you're praying for. So Betty and I chatted, and again, we were honest. I was honest with her about where I stood, in terms of wanting another child. It was a very deep connection immediately. As it turned out, I started to get off of wheat and I later got off of sugar and I had energy again. And it really wasn't about necessarily being older or having children, it was just I could change it with diet and I was amazed. So I thought, oh, maybe I could have another child. Maybe um, as soon as I found out I was pregnant and everything was healthy, I immediately I was thrilled and happy and, and didn't matter anymore. And it was only at the middle of the pregnancy, the big ultrasound, I think around 20 weeks. It was the first time Yael had gone with me to an ultrasound at this pregnancy. Um, and he went with me and he wanted to know if it was a boy or a girl. And I, uh, I said, I don't want to know, I don't want to know. And so he went, he stayed in, I said, okay, so you stay in after the ultrasound and you speak to the doctor and the doctor will tell you, but don't tell me, I don't want to know. Betty called me when her baby was two weeks old. And um, she wanted to thank me for all the prayers that I had given. And I really didn't feel responsible. I was just doing something as a matter of praying. Like I prayed for many people. And, and, and she said, listen, I know you've discussed with me that you don't necessarily want another child or whatever, but I want to make sure that I'm praying for what you want. So um, I want you to think about it and um, let me know. <laughs> So I said, listen, I don't want to think about it. I'm just, just give me a moment and I'll ask myself what it is that you want, that I want you to pray for me. Or, and so I just dug deep and I said, I want you to pray that we'll have a healthy boy. <laughs> and so he went in and he stayed and, and the doctor told him. And then we went out, actually we had like an hour until we had to get home to babysitter. And so we went out to eat. And uh, I said, okay, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And I was trying to sort of read his face, I, but I didn't want to know, so I was trying not to read his face. And then he just blurted it out because he couldn't keep it in. So that was when I found out I had a girl. And um, the next month I got pregnant. I and then it took me like a long time to actually take it in and to fully internalize that I was going to have a girl um, because it was just such shocking and awesome news. Betty had her girl. And she's just amazing in every in every way. She's great. And active and more active and busier and more of a personality, I would say, in terms of an active and busy way than any of my other boys. But um, I looked back when I would have conceived. I remembered that I spoke to Betty around that time. And I knew I'd sent her an email the day that I spoke to her because I needed to send her some information. I looked back, when did I send this email? I sent the email on or around the day that I asked her to please to pray that we would have a healthy boy. So that prayer was probably associated with the conception. It was also part of a sort of a slew of, of a few other prayers of, for people who um, that I wanted to 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 to, to be pre to get pregnant and, and have healthy children. I went for the ultrasound uh, at 21 weeks, and part of what they can tell you is the size of the baby. And uh, the technician was like, do you want to know? And I said, I don't know, I'll tell you at the end of the, of the ultrasound. And um, so he said, do you want to know? So again, I dug deep, and I said, yes. So in Hebrew, it's Ben is a boy, and Bat is a girl. So they both begin with B. And, when he, and he says, Z. This is B. Between the B and the end of the word, I felt like it was a year. <laughs> you know, it's like, Ze Ben or Ze Bat, this is a girl or a boy. And so he says, Ze Ben, which means it's a boy. And I'm thinking, this is really the story. This is, this is an unbelievable story. 
I think it was all part of just the incredible, the, the thought of the incredible miracle of pregnancy and healthy babies and fertility and, and just how lucky we are to, to be able to pray for each other and, and to have people who pray for us. Please God, it should be healthy. I'm only halfway through the pregnancy. May everything just be healthy. Every pregnancy for us is, is such a miracle. For everyone, it's such a miracle. Um, I think especially after um, we had a very, I had a very, very difficult miscarriage between my first and second child. And the first child, I don't think I completely realized what an incredible miracle um, pregnancy and a healthy baby are. And my husband never wants to know the sex of the babies, and I always know, so I keep the secret. I can't tell anybody else if I can't tell my own husband, if I can't tell the father. I end up telling one friend just to get it off my chest, but it's basically a secret, and it remains that way until the birth. <laughs> so not only did I know the story was so amazing, I had to keep it secret. Um, so my husband didn't know until the birth was happening when I told him. And... Um, and then I, all, all this time I'm thinking, I can't wait to tell Hannah Jenny this. I can't wait to tell her it's a boy. Like, it's just going to be such a convergence of, of, of prayer that, um, that it's just out of this world. I didn't know that she was pregnant with a boy until it was actually Air of Rosh Hashanah, the day, the day actually of Rosh Hashanah. And I was um, in Canada and I got an email from Jenny from Hanajani saying that she, that, that Chaya had had uh, a boy. He's a doll and he's a dream come true, not only because of all this prayer, but just because I didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> it was part of a, part of a miracle. So this is Malki Chaya Yaakov. And Abigail Itiya Chaya, otherwise known as Gavi. Um, and this is the first time the two babies are meeting. Yeah. So, um, so what's, what's, it, what's it like, uh, Betty, like having a girl after so many boys? Um, well, she is definitely the princess of the house, and, uh, and all the boys run around after her. Um, and she's just a lot of energy, and Has very active, and a tremendous amount of fun, and a serious personality. And it's really a miracle. It's wonderful. And Chaya, has it, has it for you having a boy after so many girls? And I was uh, worried about having a breed because I'd never had one. And it was totally fine. It's a spectacular story. I think it definitely points to the, um, the power of, of tefillah. We, sometimes we pray and we don't really believe it's going to make a difference. But at the back of their mind, there's a little bit of doubt that it might, it might make a difference, but it might not make a difference. And I think that when we're um, given a miracle in our lives, that it just reminds us that prayer is so incredibly powerful. And that um, I think good intentions and thinking about another person and, and really wanting something very, very badly and, and praying to God for it, I think makes, um, it, I think this is, is proof that, that really um, prayer and, and um, there, there's other forces in the world besides the, the scientific or the, um, the obvious, the obvious things that we see, um, and that God plays a, a huge part in our lives, even if we don't always uh, see it or are aware of it.